You can understand a lot about our culture through the lens of addiction. And addiction is another area where we attack the symptom and ignore the cause. And that strategy of trying to suppress the expression comes from a view of human nature, comes from, uh, it's another expression of the war against the self. So addiction, I see it as, I see addiction coming from unmet needs where the true object of the need is unavailable. Therefore, the desire, so desire is born from unmet needs. If you are hungry, you desire food. If you hold your breath, you need air, you desire to breathe. Very simple. Desire comes from unmet needs. But if the object of the need is unavailable, then the desire gets displaced onto a substitute. The substitute doesn't meet the real need. Therefore, you need more and more and more of the substitute. No amount will be enough. So if the real need is for, say, um, intimacy, like you're lonely, you need intimacy, and you're just not in community, and maybe you've received traumas in your life that cut you off from intimate relationships, well, okay, that's not available, but food is. So here's a moment of connection. Here's something that, that meets this hunger at least temporarily. But how much food is going to really meet your need for int intimacy? Is there an amount where you're so full that you no longer are lonely? No amount is enough. That's an addiction. An addiction is, it, it comes from a substitute for what's really needed. So if the need is for testing your boundaries, exploring, expanding beyond yourself, and those opportunities are not available for one reason or another, you might become addicted to gambling because here's the risk. You know, here's the, I'm putting it on the line here. Like the real need is to put it on the line for something you care about. But perhaps that's just not in the way that your life has been set up. Or maybe the need is for, I mean, I could, I could go on every single area of addiction. I mean, with, with narcotics, opioids, obviously, the need is to just feel okay because of the unresolved trauma, the wounds that, that accumulate in, in our society, the psychological wounds, the physical wounds. Like, we have a need to just feel okay. It's, uh, really, it's a need for healing. It's the desire for healing. And, and so here's the opioid or the alcohol that makes the pain go away for a little while, but it doesn't address the cause of the pain. It makes the pain go away. It makes the hopelessness go away. It makes the despair go away for a little while. Or the cocaine or the crack, it makes the depression go away for a while. You feel powerful for a little bit. Not so different than addiction to sports dramas where the unexpressed desire for greatness is displaced onto your sports heroes. So some of these addictions are culturally sanctioned because they deplete enough of the life energy to fit you into the productive box that society wants you to be in. And others are... prohibited or frowned upon because they do not enable you to continue complying with the routines of modern life. Obviously, the way to resolve an addiction is to meet the real need. I don't see any of our policymakers talking about that when it comes to the opioid crisis. I'll... Uh, Quote, a, uh, I'll cite a, a study that, I, that really resonated with my views on this matter. It involved rats. 
And this is actually quite well known now. But you know, in like in the 40s and 50s, they did addiction experiments where they took these lab rats and they fed them heroin and they gave them a choice, heroin or food. And they chose heroin until they starved. So the conclusion that they drew was desire is not to be trusted. Nature is not to be trusted. We got to keep those drugs away from people through the war on drugs, through interdiction, through um, prohibition, through punishment. Make sure that you know your 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 depraved desires are not going to run loose because then you'll like it's like this devil that will drag you down into a spiral of of hell. Well, I think it was like in the 80s or 90s, this uh, researcher, I think his name was Bruce Shapiro, I can't remember exactly, but he uh, repeated the experiment. But this time he didn't use caged rats. Instead, he built a rat park for them where the rats, instead of being isolated in cages all by themselves, they got to run around and make love with other rats and have nests and have all these exercise things. And it was a paradise for rats. And in that circumstance, the rats might try the heroin, but they weren't that interested. They would go back to the food. And even addicted rats who were taken from their cages and put into the rat paradise, they would wean themselves off the opioid and become unaddicted. So the proneness to addiction wasn't just human nature or rat nature. It was a symptom of circumstances. So we got to look to changing the circumstances and it could be social circumstances or it could be the psychological circumstances, the life circumstances. So if you're addicted to something, whether it's food or alcohol or pornography or gambling or something more subtle, then you got to ask, what is the unmet need? And that opens a gateway to healing and to grief and maybe to unknowing because you may very well know what that need is and you've known it all along. Maybe you can put words to it, maybe you can't. But just because you know what it is doesn't mean you know what to do about it. <laughs> it's not trivial to meet that need. It's not because you were stupid that you weren't meeting it. It's because you didn't know how or because it just wasn't available. But at least it's a start. Step one is to understand that you're not bad, that it is a symptom of an unmet need. Step two is to feel into what that need is. And then that becomes a prayer that if you hold that intention to meet your real needs, eventually the object of the need will, you'll have opportunities to bring that in. But it's not like some easy, easy recipe to do that.